Hi, this is Hannah Holiday, and for my second blog for English 153, I am going to be talking about Jan Morris's book, The Conundrum. And one thing that I noticed just right off the bat um, was her constant repetitive use of the word body. I really found it to be um, representative of her internal and sometimes um, physical struggles that she was facing in regards to her gender and sex um, throughout the book. Specifically, I think that both of these issues are a loop together um, through her constant use of the word body, and I really think it is representative um, of just the confusion that she was feeling while she was younger, and um, eventually I think it becomes, her body becomes something that she, um, in the end, is proud of and accepts. Um, I didn't count the exact number of times that the word body appeared, um, but I found a lot of quotes in each chapter that I, uh, found the word body in, so I thought that was very interesting. Um, right off the bat, the book opens up with heavy emphasis on the fact that she is in the wrong body. Um, the quote, I was three or perhaps four years old when I realized that I had been born into the wrong body and should really be a girl. I remember the moment well, and it is the earliest memory of my life. So clearly, I mean, just right there, the first sentence, it sets the precedent for the entire book that we already know she feels like she is in this foreign vessel, and her insides don't match her outsides or her physical appearance. So I really think that um, it also shows that even though she's so young, and I know a lot of us at this time, we we don't even know our own bodies just because we're so young, but she still knows that something's foreign, and it's definitely this body that she's in. And I just think that is such a strong way to start the, the story, just because automatically we're thought to think about her body and what's wrong with it and what is she doing to combat that wrongness. Um, and then she goes on to repeatedly again in that chapter, she mentions how her body doesn't feel like her own, um, and she continues to keep just saying uh, that she's a girl in a boy's body, which I think is just so powerful that she's able to admit these things um, when she is such at such a young age. Um, moving on, she discusses her first sexual experience and how that makes her body feel, um, but overall I believe that her body is overwhelmed. Um, it's Oxford. She's um, She likes it there, but clearly she's in the wrong vessel. It's what is on the inside is not matching the outside, so she's having to combat that. And I think in this case, she's just looking to feel something and trying to make some kind of connection with other people, but ultimately the physical part of her body is not connecting with her mind and how she feels. Um, so another point where the word body is used a lot is... Um, chapter five. I mean, even the title of the chapter contains the, the phrase to alter the body, um, which once again, bodies there kind of talking about this internal struggle, this confusion that's going on in her own mind. Um, and she repeats throughout the chapter, this to alter the body, this quote to alter the body. Um, and it's just to signify how badly she wants this change. And it's almost like, um, whenever she uses the word body, it's just like she's trying to tie an object to something that she's confused about. I mean, it's easier for us to understand our confusion, I think, when we have an object to tie it to. Um, and also, I think that body is such a loose term in the sense of of, a fusion, uh, of confusion because she also focuses a lot on um, other people's bodies. And one of my other favorite cro quotes um, from this book um, is when she's climbing Mount Everest and she's noticing how like the, how a male's body um, looks at the climb and how a female does. So she basically says, um, talking about another one of the guys who's climbing, um, I envied him in his innocent speed and wondered if he too felt that tingling of the body, that sense of mastery, which had so deepened my sense of duality upon the slopes of Everest. But the more I thought about it, the more clearly I, rea I realized that he had no body at all. And I just think that last phrase, he had no body at all, just kind of signifies the fact that she places this word body and what it means, what it means to have your insides match your outside. She places so much importance on that. And here's this guy who clearly is physically capable, but she wonders, like, 
beyond that, is he anything besides that body? So I just think that, honestly, is a really strong quote. And when I read that, it made me think back immediately to the other quote where it talks about how she knew that she was a girl in a boy's body. Just kind of this thought that, like, we know our own bodies so well. And she knew automatically that it was foreign. And throughout the book, she talks just about how... um how she just feels about her body and she just says I felt my body was not my own that's another quote she used and um she resented her body um but she did not dislike it it's interesting I think the word resent in that sense um because I think in the beginning in her youth um she has no choice but as she gets older I think she does a little bit start to resent it because she knows that ultimately it doesn't match what's in her what's in her head and so I think putting an object and explaining that confusion and having the object be her body um, signifies just how wrong wrong um, she felt in her own skin. And I think that's one of the scariest fears that you can have is not feeling comfortable in your own skin.